Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hole in One Show podcast presented by Bell Bank and Shields. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. That's right, podcast. For the first time ever, the Hole in One Show is branching out from the TV show, and we're pilot episode tonight for the Hole in One Show podcast. And I'm thrilled to be joined by my co host tonight, the champion of season four of the Hole in One Show, Jason Schmidt. Jason, welcome to the show. Good to be here. We're also joined by the championship belt, which I know is probably the most coveted thing other than your wife and kids in your house here on set. What do you think about that? Correct. It, it, it will be <laughs> on display above the fire mantle. Well, we're, we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Big thanks to Steve Hallstrom here in uh, Flag Family Media for putting this together for us. This is a lot of fun. Like I said, uh, first one we've ever done. I actually joke with him. I hope I really don't like this because this did run in the run in the family, <laughs> and I saw what it did to pops. But this is fun, and uh, we're thrilled to have you along. So, uh, really, we just want to talk about the Hole in One Show. Uh, we've done four seasons of the show. Uh, Jason's been on the show two different times. I got to the final show two different times, and uh, you know what we do on the show is we raise money for charity. Uh, we've raised over sixty thousand dollars for charity. And one of the, the cool things this year is Jason won the entire thing, and he was able to win uh, over $3,000 thanks to Shields to the Bismarck Sertoma Club. So uh, first, I want to start with that. That's the most important reason for the show. That's the mission statement for the show. So why don't you share a little bit with uh, Bismarck Sertoma Club? The Bismarck Sertoma Club is a local service club in Bismarck. It's been around longer than I've been alive. Yeah. And uh, the main mission is hearing health and speech therapy. So as a group, we raise money and we find people that are in need, um, kids and adults, if they need hearing aids or any speech, speech therapy services that we can help out with them financially. And it's so very how, beneficial. How long have you been part of that organization? I think it's five years coming up now. Well, I know it mean a lot, meant a lot to you and you were able to play for them. And, and like I said, $3,000 from Shields for that. So, um, you know, what, what's the, what are the folks of the Bismarck Sertoma Club saying for with you winning the show? What are your friends saying with seeing you on TV? So I, I had to miss our meeting today Okay, <laughs> to get here, Yeah, which have been the first meeting after the show aired. Um, however, a lot of them watched the, the Riverwood Heading West show. So they were, everyone's pretty pumped. Um, you know, it's, it was hard to keep a straight face when they're like, oh, you're going, there's another one. Uh, how did that end? Yeah, right. And I'm like, well, you just need to watch to find out. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're, they're pretty excited. I think, uh, you know, more excited to put the money into good use. So for those of you who haven't seen the show, uh, we have six contestants join us each show. Each contestant gets 200, uh, two shots from 150 yards. The closest shot wins $1,000 their charity of choice and gets to the final show. So we have a Bismarck featured show, and that was the eighth episode of season four, and Jason was able to win that show. Uh, and so then he advanced to the finals, and he won. Uh, for those of you who did see the show, the, the, the interesting thing about the show this year is we, we had a ton of wind, a ton of wind, and it was cold. Uh, so talk about that a little bit, the conditions and just the atmosphere of being able to play under the lights for the last two shows and obviously uh, coming out on top. So coming off from Bismarck, <laughs> I, I did ride with uh, one of the other contestants, Nick Caveney. Yep. And the gas mileage, uh, mileage per gallon was really good because the wind was pushing us <laughs> the whole way. Yeah, it was going um, 30 miles an hour. From so we, we we got to the course early, you know, to do a little warm up. And uh, that, yeah, the wind was howling. So some of the other shows at Tape Prior were walking off. So we were just kind of, you know, doing a little CSI. Yeah. Find out what uh, what they were hitting. And it was, yeah, I mean, heard five irons or three irons. So we were went out and played a few holes and... We strategically found a few shots that were into the wind so we could practice from 150 and just kind of go from there. But then yeah. we got, you know, and then when we got to go hit, the wind died down, but it got cold. Yeah. So it was basically kind of about, you know, it was probably a wash. Now, your background, share a little bit. You were a professional golfer and yes. you were to take, where are you from, background in playing professional golf, and what do you do now? So originally, I uh, well, grew up in Bismarck, still live there now. Um, I sell real estate in Bismarck, right? Currently, and Oak Tree I, Realtors. Yep, Oak Tree Realtors in town. Yep, me and my brother Darren. And I had finished college at UND up the road here in Grand Forks and moved out to California and was cleaning clubs and working and caddying. And then started, you know, I was like, hey, I'm going to give this a run. Yeah. And I played, we'll say, full time for probably about five years. And it was, it was fun. I met a lot of great people. I couldn't beat Dave on a regular basis. <laughs> and I couldn't beat enough people either. <laughs> so, uh, it, you know, the, the, I was donating a lot. So <laughs> that's okay. I ended up, you know, doing real estate and it's, and uh, 
So that's, gosh, that's been 15 years now. And fast forward, you have a family? Yes, I got a, I got a beautiful wife, Ellie, and two young ones, Bodie, he's just uh, over two years, and we had a new baby born on uh, Super Bowl Sunday this year. That's awesome. Oh, Jay, that's that's awesome. awesome. So you and I have a similar background of playing professional golf on the mini tour level. Uh, you can confirm that it's the worst business model you could ever imagine. You have to pay to work. Thousand dollars to play in a golf tournament, yes. where two thirds of the guys playing in the golf tournament go home without a paycheck. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, you and I both have jobs now, and every yeah. two weeks it helps. <laughs> I mean, I, I I joked with my dad on the way up that I've I've earned more money on the hole in one show <laughs> than I did in my entire professional playing career for other people. But, but that's okay. <laughs> the money I've won has been donated. Yeah. <laughs> to my favorite charity, so that's even better. So your professional golf career. <laughs> Was a preparation for a TV show, game show, right? I mean, who, who knew? California, that it would go this way. Scrubbing hooks in California, <laughs> caddying, Dakota's tour. You know what? We're just we're peaking right now. Yeah. We're in our forties and we're peaking. Yeah, this is what this is. So, yeah. congratulations on the show. I'm glad that all that hard effort, hard work, and effort playing professional golf could lead to this championship belt. <laughs> Now, where is this in your house? Other, I know it's right here right now, but where is it in your house? And is Ellie okay with that? She, uh, she is okay with it. I did, I did hide it in the house if we had some friends coming over because I didn't want the secret to get out. Oh, so, oh that's right. Since it was, you know, <laughs> since it was, it was taped prior. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think anyone would have been as excited as I was. <laughs> What is that thing? <laughs> like, whatever. Good for you, buddy. Um, you know, the, the wife, we've been, we, you know, in the episode, we stayed up, we yeah. watched it, and, uh, you know, DVR it, of course. And, mm -hmm. and she's like, hey, when is, when can we not watch this over and over again? And <laughs> but you I'm do. like, our son loves us. This is great. Yeah, you do have an interested spectator at home, right? Yes. Yeah. He, he even quoted you on the show after I hit my shot close on the. Uh, for um, on the eighth show, yeah, yep, yeah, on the eighth hey, show. Hey, hey, let's go. You said, Hey, hey, let's go. So, my little boy Bordy was going around <laughs> the house going, Hey, hey, let's go. That's what it's all about, <laughs> you know. That's what's the, the fun thing about the show is people can come on and they can talk about the charity they're playing for, but at the same time, and a big part of the reason why I, I love doing the show, and um, you know, I lost my dad just under five years ago. And the great thing about my dad, if I miss him, I mean, the crazy thing is with the internet now, I, I can go search him out. And I can yeah. hear, I can watch video. He has so much video and so much radio out there. Uh, it's pretty special. And, and I really love being part of the show and doing the show because my girls, who are six, four, and three now, will always have their dad, you know, on TV. And yeah. the fun thing about the end of the final show, we had the girls on there. They said hi. And that was a really special moment for our family. But that's part of it. I mean, our, we have contestants who get on the show and they talk about how their kids are watching at home. And the fact that you share that with, with Bodie is really cool. Yeah. He's, I mean, he just, I want to watch it more. Ellie, my wife, does not. And I'm like, it's for the kids. Don't deprive them of such fun. <laughs> well, I appreciate you making the drive into t town today. Uh, what we did today was we we did a, uh, a quick little uh, bit with uh, representatives from Shields. Mm -hmm. Shields is one of our title sponsors here starting in season four, and they will be with Bell Bank in season five, too. And we were able to go get a happy Gilmore check. For the first time ever, I saw a happy Gilmore check on the tee. They presented you with $3,000 to the Sertoma Club, Bismarck, uh, on the seventh hole of the Fargo Country Club. So appreciate you coming in for that today and then obviously being here on this pilot episode of the Hole in One mm -hmm. Show podcast. Yeah, so that, that big check. Big check. I, had, I saw them get presented to many, many other people. <laughs> I, watched, I watched from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, it'd be nice to have one of those checks. Again, yeah. you get one and it's made out to a charity, but hey, that's, that's what it's about. I, right? I wouldn't be here if I didn't have all that over before. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we're going to be right back after this with more Hole in One Show podcast. Any bank can tell you they have a rock solid commitment to agriculture. Bell can prove it. To this day, every Bell Bank branch is partially built with rocks we've picked from our founder's farm. But our roots in ag have grown more than a few offices. They've shaped who we are and formed our entire approach to banking. Let us prove it to you as you grow your farm and prepare your legacy for the next generation. Bell Bank, committed to ag. Golf to me is patience. It's weird to say but golf is life. It is, it's the ultimate game of life. You know, it's an individual sport. You have to put in a lot of work 
to get minimally better. And that's kind of the beauty of it. You come back to improve. That's why I love golf is just every shot is, is different. That next round, that next shot, you know it could be that start of a story. I don't even want to say a game. It's more than a game. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Hole of One Show. Thrilled to have you here. Uh, again, joined by Jason Schmidt, our Season 4 champion. And uh, next segment, we want to talk a little bit about the game of golf and how it's a special game and it brings people together. Uh, the cool thing about this season and, and doing this show is, you know, you reach out to friends in their area uh, and, uh, hey, I need, you, I need your help. I need to generate some interest for this show. Uh, I need to help. You know, I need some sponsors out west. And, Jason, I, I really appreciate uh, – how great of a friend you've been to help with the show, to grow the show. And it's really cool that you were able to uh, obviously win season four, but you know, let's talk about golf a little bit and you know, how it brings families together, how it uh, it's a great place to grow up on a golf course and give a little bit about your background of around the game of golf. Boy, I uh, started when I was probably, I'm guessing four or five. Yeah. I'd go with my dad down to Riverwood golf course with his buddies and I would, I remember I'd ride in the cart, play the holes I can. I think I had a cut off five iron and a cut off putter. Yeah. And I, to this day, probably one of the reasons I still play fast, whenever I putt, he's like, go run and tee off. <laughs> Stay <laughs> like, out of everybody's like, way. Get going. Yeah. You know, and, and that was, you know, so that, that started. Then, you know, I got two brothers who played golf. And I remember, you know, really got into it probably junior high, early high school. And, you know, We'd, we'd play in the mornings on the weekends and in the afternoons I'd go up and be like, hey, can we go do spend some quality family time together? And, that's cool. and dad knew that that meant we go golfing. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and it's been awesome. Yeah, so for me, I started the game at seven years old. I lived next to the, the par three at the FCC. And a uh, funny story, my, my dad was a sports anchor at WDAY and he's not a golfer at all. Neither was my mom. Uh, but he was taken over for a guy who uh, had been there many years and he had a, membership part of his compensation package was a membership to the fargo country club and when my dad was being onboarded there at wday is like hey you know he had a he had a membership to the fcc <laughs> <laughs> what about me yeah. and they're like you don't golf he's like i don't care i want the membership to the fcc <laughs> i do now <laughs> and, and so that kind of started it you know dad kind of putting his elbows out like he normally would and saying hey what he had i want one i want one of those and it was a membership to the fcc and my mom always joked she's like she was always really good friends with the workers at the FCC because FCC, they, as, as she said, they would, they were uh, poor TV hosts back in the day. And so, <laughs> uh, you know, I, it was really, really cool to be, I mean, that was my babysitter. I would go to the par three at seven years old and just start at six in the morning and go round and round and, and then, uh, uh, you know, the pool and, and going back to the par three in, in the evening. And now uh, what I'm doing now is, you know, the director of club operations at the Fargo Country Club and head golf pro. And it is really cool to be full circle and see these kids coming out mm. tenfold, right? And we've got Lisa Schwinden. She's our director of instruction. And there's just kids all over the place. And that's where you start to learn the love of the game. You get to know friends at four and five years old on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Now, you were lucky. You had a brother. You had a brother who was into it. and Two brothers. Two yeah. brothers that were into it. And, and so that was really a nice a family piece. Um, but for me and my dad, you know, it was something that we started doing later in his life and it was just, it's a special game, you know, mm -hmm. it's a special game, it brings people together. Like I mentioned. Um, so, uh, is, does Ellie play it? Does your wife play? She, she does now. Does she? She knew nothing of golf when we met. Yeah. Like literally nothing. She actually has a favorite golfer, Ricky Fowler. Now. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, so she actually follows, she, she's a teacher and. And kids will talk about like golf, and she's like, "I know who that player is," and they look at her like, "How?" <laughs> she goes, "Well, I know now." But yeah, so she's been playing for probably about three years now. She hits it pretty good. She's actually part of few part of threes at Hawk Tree on her own. Nice, nice. So yeah, so, she she enjoys it. So Kels, my wife Kelsey, uh, we want to start doing some couples nights together. But I tell you, this is the craziest. My wife does not play golf. And she tried to qualify for the show, and I love her to death, but she duffed it <laughs> off the tee a couple of times with a driver from 150 yards. But she's the best. And when she was pregnant, we have three of we have three little girls, six, four, and three. And when she was pregnant, she was like a 10 handicap. It was unbelievable. We've talked about this all the time. She was an unbelievable <laughs> golfer pregnant. Did, did Ellie play any golf when she was pregnant? Uh, I, th I think we did like one couple's night. 
<laughs> just then, to get out of the house. She doesn't like to talk about that much because <laughs> – so number three at Hawk Tree is a downhill par three. Yeah. Uh, she hit first yeah. to probably about 15 feet. I mean, I'm a competitor. Yeah, okay. I, okay. I, I won closest right. to the hole. She didn't yeah. like that. Again, I'm sorry. all that years of pre preparation <laughs> and professional golf. So let's let's touch on a different subject here. Professional golf at the highest level. We have played with some people who are at the next level. Um, a lot of interesting things going on right now in the last year with Live Golf and the PGA Tour. They're in a battle. They're, you know, it's a it's a turf war trying to get the the biggest names in the game. What are your take? What's your take on on the split, and um, you know, just the game in general at the moment? Uh, I'm going to start with the game in general at the moment. Um, golf is growing fast. It's popular. It is. Yep. There is. There's a lot of people getting involved. I think they're realizing that it's a lifetime game, yep. and just the social aspect and networking. You get to be outside nature. Um, you know, as far as the the, the live tour coming. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff going on as to why and where the money's coming from. But I mean, if guys choose to go there, I mean, that's on their own accord. And do, it, do you think it's compelling golf? Do you like the team aspect? I I don't. If you can sense in my in my delivery, the answer is no from the host. I don't <laughs> I don't all. understand the team concept. I have yeah. not. I've watched maybe a couple minutes. It's chaotic. Of, of, They're all over it. the place. I don't understand the leaderboard. I may Smash. need to watch. Sweet. May need to watch racing to figure it out, but I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's. I mean, if the guys want to go, that's fine. I mean, it's their decision. But I think jumping back to the you know the PGA Tour if they want to, that that's yeah, a. But overall, it's got to be compelling television. It's got to be compelling. Yeah. You know, you, you, at the end of the day, you need eyeballs. I would imagine. You know, and the interesting thing is, it's on the CW, and we we joke about that. But the bottom line is, on a Sunday afternoon. When you're going through the guide, CW is right below, <laughs> right I mean, below the PGA Tour. So I, I've caught myself flipping back and forth, but I end up going back to the PGA Tour, even if it's not a big name event, even if it's a smaller event. And, and I just like that coming down to 18. Um, it just, but I'm 40. I'm 40. Yeah. You, you know, what's that next generation? What are they going to be drawn to? You know, I. I think I, I, I'm an old guy. I kind of like I love the PGA Tour and I like the way it, it ends on 18 and and the 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 events that have you know the the history behind them. A colonial. I mean, colonial was last week and it was head up against some live golf event and where I mean, where even was it? I didn't. I didn't. Harold Varner won. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I didn't even know there was a live golf event going on. But but not only like you know the history, but the journeyman tour pro like. Either you or I could go Monday qualify, right? And exactly. Win on the PGA Tour. Yep. Yep. They just, just. Do you think any of these guys that went to live are regretting their decision? I would. I would. A few, maybe. I don't know. I mean, probably not when they look at their bank account. But I'm saying, you know, just the the history of the game and and being part of something that's such so long standing. I mean, do you, do you think that there's some some angst on that? Do you think there's like I shouldn't have done this? I I think that. You know, as uh, someone of my age, yep. you would if someone brought that opportunity to you to join Fair. and live Fair. versus if you were 23 Fair and enough. you're dangling yep. money. Yep. I think as you get older, you start to, you know, things prioritize. And maybe history would have been more important. I'm not sure. Yeah. You're sore every morning when you get out of bed. <laughs> things like that. Yeah. You're not hitting it as good. <laughs> and somebody wants to pay you $25 million to go play golf. Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's it, one thing it has done. For the guys that said no, and we know one of them, Tom Hoagie, the guys mm -hmm. that said no, things got a real a lot better on the PGA Tour shortly after. A yes. lot better. Yeah. Twenty million dollar purses? Are you kidding me? Yeah. You go down the schedule, eight million, nine million, eight million, twenty. You're like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's pretty nice. That is one thing with Jay Monahan. He did find some money in the couch yes. after Liv came, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was legitimate sure. competition, and he had to save those guys who, who were the big names. Uh, on the PGA Tour, and it was interesting to see, you know, in some respects, it proved Phil Mickelson right, right? Yeah, it, it did. I mean, Phil brought a lot out and, you know, good or bad, but yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, lot of money to be played for. Yeah, it's interesting for sure. Um, well, and, and then the PGA Tour with, you know, world ranking points, are they going to be able to get in the Ryder Cup, major tournaments, you know, half of them qualify for the U.S. Open. So, I mean, the... 
I don't know. I feel like world ranking points are like interest rates. They're going to hit you eventually. <laughs> they may not have hit you right away, but they're going to hit you eventually if you don't have world ranking points. Yeah. You know, and if they're not playing for world ranking points on a live tour, they're going to run out of starts in those majors unless you're Brooks Kepka and you just won one. So now you're going to be able to get in future years. So mm-hmm. uh, it's it's really. I mean, we're at the we're in the middle of it right now. I mean, for those who follow professional golf. Boy, oh boy, it sure has been content full. There's been a lot of people making oh, for sure. making yeah. a living off of commenting on golf and tweeting on golf because there's uh, there's it's passionate. You know, golfers are passionate, and you're seeing that come out right now. Yeah, you. I mean, you watch it, read enough, it'll make your head spin. Yeah, for sure. Just like uh, everybody up here in the north, we don't get golf more than six months a year. So whenever we do, we're all over the golf course. Oh, yeah. That's why it's nice that it's light out until 10 o'clock. You can tee off at 7 if you play quick. You can get a quick 18 in. That's true. That's true. Well, Jason, I'm going to wrap this up here. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, Good test ground for the Hole in One Show podcast. And it was great to obviously recap season four, uh, touch on you, your personal life, and and your background in golf and our friendship, uh, and talk a little bit of Live Golf and PGA Tour, too. So, Thanks for being with us, and thanks for making the drive in from Bismarck. Well, hey, I, I appreciate it. You've been a good friend for a long, long time, and to help support such a good cause that brings you know a lot of money to charities yeah. and some local competition, some yeah. other stuff for people to watch out yeah. or to watch on TV because during COVID, this was the only live – well, That's right. Well, it wasn't live, but it, it was, was t- but, but it was live sporting event. That's it was a live watch. sporting event. Yeah, year one, <laughs> it was there was nothing going on. Everybody was at home and they were watching it, so that was good. But uh, wasn't good for COVID. But the the, sh- the show was the only game in town. I will ask you this, and this is very important. I want to wrap up with this. Will you be back to defend your title? You have an automatic qualification into the championship show, and we need to know if the defending champion is going to show up or not. I will be present. All right. I, I, I will be there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Bell Bank and Shields, thanks so much for their support. Uh, we can't wait for uh, season five of the Hole in One show. And uh, you know what? Maybe we'll even do a episode two of the Hole in One show podcast. Thanks for being with us. We'll talk to you soon.